New at five today, DJ Nabs considers himself as every kind of DJ. DJ. He's a performer, he's an artist, a producer, and he has been doing it for more than 20 years. He's also been working on a documentary called The American DJ Story. Yeah, that documentary chronicles how DJ Nabs got started and the famous faces he's met and worked with along the way. Jaquetta Williams talked with him about that and the pitfalls. Jaquetta? Well, Bernard and Stephanie, the American DJ story is the documentary of nearly 22 years of footage pieced together with some famous faces you may not have known back then, but you certainly know now, like Chris Lava Lava, a.k.a. Ludacris. We talked about how DJ Nab started in North Carolina, made his way to Atlanta and around the world. DJ Nabs, y'all give him some love. There's a lot of spirit in the music. DJ Nabs has loved music for as long as he can remember. My dad got me my first turntable, and then from there, I taught myself how to scratch. I have been a musician since I was in the sixth grade, played saxophone from sixth grade through the military. He came from humble beginnings, struggling to make it. Atlanta about making some money. But where did he get the name Nabs? <laughs> okay, so Nabs, Nabs is short for Nabisco cookies. <laughs> My best friend, Luke Duke, said I look like a skinny pack of Nabs. <laughs> I was Nabs for years before I even became DJ Nabs. Mm -hmm. His birth name, Uther Anthony Fowler. His family calls him Tony. The world knows him as DJ Nabs. DJ Nabs in the house! Give it up for DJ Nabs in the house! I get DJ Nabs. <laughs> My big break came through Arrested Development. So I was really their DJ. And they got a record deal and was managed by Michael Malden, who is Jermaine Dupree's father. Somehow or another, Criss Cross needed a DJ. That was kind of the start of my like professional career. How you feeling? Then I went on the road to start touring, and we did the Michael Jackson tour, which is my first tour. So yo, Nabs, why not you kick that? It was so many people, 75,000 to 100,000 people, and we opened up, so we performed. And then I had a 10-minute section to rock the crowd myself. But once you handle that sort of crowd, you can, you can do anything. In the beginning, it was hard. There were struggles along the way. Hardest part is being appreciated and being compensated. So you really have to get behind your own brand. And if I was in the club five nights a week, I was drinking five nights a week. And it, it got to a point my tolerance was out of control. I used to have blackouts mm. and do things that was were out of character. It got worse before it got better. DJ Nabs got a DUI. He was fired from a radio station, lost his record deal with Columbia Records, stopped getting bookings for jobs, depression set in. But a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his mother helped him pull it together. He stopped drinking altogether. Now, his advice to other DJs. Relationships are important. Maintain those. This is a marathon. But that's the only way you'll be like considered a legend. I mean, people can look at what you've done in hindsight and have respect for it. Well, Nabs is still working on his independent documentary. He's submitting it to various film festivals. He also just celebrated the 20th anniversary of So So Death with Jermaine Dupri, Chris Cross, Mariah Carey, Jay-Z, DeBrat, and more this past weekend. You will see more of Nabs on Thursday in another Jaquetta's Close-Up segment when we talk fitness and boxing with his trainer, Xavier Biggs.